full disclosure, news and commentary number five. <clears throat> Getting this one out relatively quickly after the last one. But it was a big weekend, not in terms of necessarily the number of shows that happened, but the magnitude of what happened. Lots to talk about. Let's jump right in it. Um, I'm going to suggest to Larry that for next week's tipping point, we get Conscience Heru. Um, conscious. Conscious. Conscience. Conscious. Jesus. Heru on as a guest. He's a wrestler that retired recently due to his injury. And from what I have heard, um, it's pretty bad. It's like a muscle degenerative thing. So it's legit. Uh, people who are saying this is part of an angle. Oh, wrestling. Um, it's not. Um, I'm going to definitely suggest to Larry that we try to get him on as a guest for next week, Tuesday, uh, to talk to him. Now, from, from what I've always heard about him, he was not the best in-ring physical performer, but um, a guy with charisma and the guy with a great, great ability to work the gimmick and kind of, you know, all the stuff that truly matters, honestly. Um, let's see, shows that happened and their crowds. Uh, the Making Towns Classic Tournament, a bunch of women wrestlers, um, and then strangely a, a tournament, but then they had a women's match that was not part of the tournament, which I find very strange, but it's neither here nor there. Um, they, they had the, the very cursory sort of what happened on the show. Um, they didn't list a crowd, but then somebody in the... Um, comments on Georgia GWH news and notes dot blogspot dot com listed the crowd as 45 with 80 tickets sold um, which we appreciate very much again if you don't put a crowd I'm just I just don't see the point at this stage in the game not putting a crowd pro wrestling Bushido for example um, Dove Entertainment kind of production um, gave us a show report didn't list the crowd so um, I'm just gonna go based on the last, I normally never would do this, but I, I want to report on them, but you know, they didn't list a crowd. So I went back and the last listing I saw was that they'd sold their first row and I counted those on their little grid there and it's 30 seats. So I'm going to say they fucking drew 30 until somebody tells me different list your crowds. Um, a group that had no problem listing their crowd, of course, Southern honor, which drew a thousand plus. Uh, I think it was the official listing was 1,027 is what it is. Um, Rod Rob, who uh, wrote the report, um, said he's not good at counting crowds. Um, a number of people behind the scenes, which is kind of a news story on it itself, uh, took exception to that crowd, even though they weren't there. They said they had wrestlers telling them that it was 600 and blah, 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 blah. Look. Look. Um, and again, this is going to be, my commentary is going to be about uh, promoters and this whole working together thing that has, that is as fake as a silicone boo, but um, somebody, actually more than one somebody's, who I trust very much that were there, said, of course, they couldn't, they didn't physically count everybody, but they said it was a full crowd, that they had a thousand to the best of their recollection. I trust them. To me, it's a done deal. Um, the number of people who wrote me um, trying to undercut things about the Southern Honor Show, was it was really telling. Um, and there's gonna be more about the attempts to undercut Southern Honor. I will say this, um, you know, I, I said going into this show that a number of things were were kind of southern honors to lose, right? So let's let's do that quick cursory analysis. Um, I think the one thing that nobody can dispute is Gary Lamb is still promoter of the year. It is absolutely his to lose. Um, the only ones who are even in the stratosphere. Um, are possibly David Manders. I think if they can pull a huge crowd for Shindig, 
at least over 500, preferably over 651, which is the bar that he set for the most that they've ever drawn in the Boys and Girls Club, if I'm correct. Um, and then he's able to maintain, then I, you can make an argument there. I think if anarchy continues its upward trend and does, you know, if they're putting 200 to 300 people in that building for bigger shows, uh, I mean, that's undeniable, right? And they're consistently doing good on their so-called TV tapings. Um, then that's a thing. Great. Um, but Gary Lamb's promoter of the year, it's his to lose. That's, I still maintain that position. Now, show of the year, um, Rob, who's Rod, <laughs> who is, I mean, he's the teacher you fucking wanted in school, right? Everything's a B plus or higher, it feels like. Um, even he couldn't really argue, uh, looking at the show report, talking to people who were there, and people were like, well, you weren't even at the show, how can you, oh, fuck you. Like, I haven't seen 10 billion more wrestling shows than most people. Um, the show, to me, seemed awkwardly booked. There were things in sort of a, a place that I would not have put them. Now, that's not to say that it has to be the way I would have done it, but um, the show often seems to sort of work against itself. You would have, like, sort of spotty, um, like, tag match, and then you'd sort of bury the women's match behind it. Like, it just... A lot of things didn't seem to make sense. That that bit with Cody Rhodes and his and Dylan's mom pinning him. I mean, that stuff happens in indie shows. I don't really knock that as much as I knock that horrific ending. Um, but um, I said, you know, Dylan had a chance to show that he was like the Booker, um, the front runner, and I think that's definitely like that's. Definitely, if it was his to lose, he lost it. And uh, does he still have a chance to get it back? Of course, there's seven months um, left in the year. But um, there was nothing about that show that I went, that was spectacular booking. Um, nothing, honestly, not a thing. So I would say that that's definitely gone down. Um, show of the year, shaky. Um, Alan Angels as wrestler of the year, that's definitely taken a knock. I think um, Logan Creed right now might be the guy who um, has a great chance of repeating, which hasn't happened in a long, long time. Um, anyway, uh, could Southern Honor win promotion of the year? Yeah, very, very readily. I think if they continue to pull in crowds four, five hundred plus, um, even if it's a once a month show, if they continue to just be the biggest freaking swinging dick walking, um, it's going to be very hard to vote against them. Except for the fact that it's wrestling people and wrestlers who vote, and clearly there's battle lines that are being drawn, overtly and not so overtly, so that will be interesting to see. Now, we get brings us to Southern Honor. Yeah, Drew 250, um, which is a little bit better than they've been doing. Probably not as much as they wanted to do. If you're begging fans to come to your go-home show, you wanted more than 250. Um, but, you know, Shindig's next, right? Uh, here's what I found interesting. D comments on the Georgia Wrestling History posts are pretty rare thing, right? And usually they're clarification ones, like the Making Towns Classic, the person that, that wrote and was like, hey, you know, um, we actually drew 45 with 80 tickets sold. That was a that's a great comment, right? But here's a comment on the uh, Southern Fried report by a Justin Broderfag who also posted on the um, Southern Honor report and had some negative things to say. Um, let's see, Justin Broderfag. <laughs> oh, oh, internet, I love you so much. Um, Congratulations to David Manders for getting his payback on Gary Lamb. Lamb might have outdrew him, but Manders found a way to make Lamb's champion mean less than shit. Looks like Manders has been underestimated, 
as he shit right on top of Southern Honor's badly damaged champion. Is Lamb even competent enough to see through Manders? Only time will tell. Um, ooh, messages and good stuff. Okay. Um, I have to admit something. Uh, Justin here, uh, his post kind of changed my thinking. So I went back and I read the uh, Southern Fried Report. And not only is he right, it's actually worse than he made it sound. AC Mack versus Alan Angels, which again was two thirds of the main event at the Southern Honor Show the night before. They're wrestling in a fucking nothing match. The third match on the card. Yeah? And uh, it, it, they got a whole eight minutes to wrestle each other. And then um, Caution, who, by the way, beat Sal Renaro in the match before. Sal Renaro, the Peach State Heritage Champion, jobbing out to Will Caution in nine minutes in a match that fucking, let me get his name right, Rob... Gave a B minus, which is an F minus in fucking most people's definition, I would gather. So Will Caution beats the Peach State Heritage Champion in the second match on the card, which is the least important match on the card, and uh, followed only by the third match on the card. That's the second least important. And Alan Angels, the Southern Honor Champion, who took the massive ass whooping, and, and he took 12 finishers, and he still got up, and... Isn't he tough and he's just so great and then he comes and he wins while a roll up to a guy that he had such an important match with the night before. Fuck. Southern Honor uh, got shit on. Peach State got shit on. Hey, promoters who are all supposed to get along. Why are you shitting on each other's thing? That's my question to you. Why are you not respecting what the other one's doing? Why is Joe Black featured so prominently on Southern Honor and then GPW has him fucking losing right away? If you guys are about working together and not stepping on each other's toes and being respectful, see, you guys worry about stuff like, um, you know, Anarchy was worried when an, like a, a usurper was running in the same town or nearby. But why are you guys stepping on each other's toes? Why are you guys not respecting each other's bookings or each other's continuity or whatever you want to call it? Now, you may say, I don't have to do that. I'm my own thing. And I'm like, sure. Technically, that's true. But Southern Fried, you know, I got I to gotta say, Justin, I'm not going to say that last name anymore. <laughs> Um, Justin, he's not wrong. You know, David Manders, maybe he's a little craftier than I thought he was. Um, maybe it's Todd. But somebody took a giant steaming shit on Southern Honor's champion and the main number one contender. And the guys did it. But I'm not going to really fault the guys as much, though I would be much more inclined to protect myself, wouldn't you? Um, so what was my philosophy in booking PCW? Did I allow other promotions champions to come on my show and get shine? Yes, I did. Ask anybody. You would think that I would have been the opposite, but no. And people who came to PCW did it because I booked them better. I tended to book them better than where they were being booked. That's how I got over positivity respecting everybody else. Does that sound crazy? I'm saying that? Yeah. You know why? Because I was confident in my ability as a booker and as a promotion. And I wasn't fighting a covert war against anybody. I was fighting an overt war against everybody. But at the same time, that kind of wrestling stuff, I just didn't engage in it. That's crazy to see, is it not? If I was going to try to get the rub off of an organization, it wasn't going to be a local one. 
it was going to be a big one. Um, the original Sacred Ground. I mean, how many times did I bring in the NWA World Champion to come in and lose to my guys? By the way, it's Sacred Ground one when I was talking about, you know, how I had to go to war with Awesome Kong and how I got something out of all the outside talent. I forgot to mention the fact that the NWA World Champion Adam Pierce at the time lost to my champion Shane Marks by DQ. And in the Battle Royal, because I wasn't able to do the Ring of Honor Champion in a three-way match, which was my original thing, Ring of Honor Champion, NWA World Champion, and the PCW Champion going at each other. I wasn't able to do that. So I put the Ring of Honor Champion, who at the time was Roderick Strong, in the Battle Royal, and I had Jeter no-sell a bunch of his chops and fucking get thrown out, putting my guys over right but for the other local promotions no i never went out of my way to make them look bad in fact most of the time when i worked with them i made them look great yeah so interesting yeah justin pointed out a good thing um an interesting thing put an ac mac against alan angels in your third match in a meaningless match that seemed to advance absolutely nothing and lead to nothing interesting at shindig and if anything, out of all of those guys, Will Caution, Sal Renaro, AC Mac, Allen Angels, Sal Renaro, who's the Peach State Heritage champ, Allen Angels, who's the Southern Honor champ, out of those four, AC Mac, who's the Scenic City Rumble winner, right? He's losing by a roll up, AC Mac. Allen Angels is winning in a meaningless match via roll up in an eight minute match. And Sal Renaro, the Peach State Area Champion, is jobbing to Will Caution, who then comes back and does something in the other match. Will Caution, who really is not the champion anywhere, and the other three guys are champions of some sort elsewhere for major promotions. And all three of them are made to look like shit. To me, that's interesting. It's noteworthy. Hmm? Manders? I, shit, I don't have time to go get a hat. I'm tip my hat to you. Slick, buddy. Slick, slick, slick. A um, lot of great shows coming up this weekend. But this was a big weekend, right? Between Southern Honors Go Home Show... And now they're giving themselves, and I think this is smart, right? Their shindig is first uh, weekend in June. So they're giving themselves a month to really push uh, and get that show done and draw the people in. Can't wait. Um, Southern Honor, they did it. Um, they got their thousand. That's also how it's going to be remembered historically. And... What's interesting me is what I hear behind the scenes is this undercurrent and rumblings and people who overtly don't want to appear like they're competing, but they're doing everything they can to undermine the other guys. And you know what? I fucking love it. Because it's real. Because it's honest. And that's what I've been saying all along. This whole notion of promoters working together. The only people who really work together are the people that are basically the same at multiple promotions. If you have the booker at the same at the, both promotions and, you know, the promoter is more or less the same and you have the working relationship shit, um, then sure. Great. But, again, maybe, maybe a lot of people don't see it that way because they're not really wrestling people. Like, Gary Lamb's not really a wrestling person. David Manders is not really a wrestling person. So maybe they don't see the use of each other's major performers and shitting on them as a bad thing. Hey, that's on them. Uh, one guy who I think is sort of bulletproof from all of that bullshit is Logan Creed. But that's because that guy looks and feels like a star. All reports from Southern Honor, people who told me this was that Logan Creed really got the biggest pop of any of the local guys without assistance. And by without assistance, I mean, yeah, if you're walking out there with Cody Rhodes, you're going to get a fucking pop. But Logan Creed is the only one who looked like a star, who wasn't already a legit superstar, um, not one of the AW guys. But Logan Creed gets a huge reaction because he looks like a star. There's just something you can't substitute, right? Speaking of guys looking like a star... Corey Hollis is a big fucking deal in uh, Southern Honor, and he's a big fucking deal in Southern Fried, 
and you know whether he's working with Michael Judas um, in Southern Fried or you know what he's doing in Southern Honor um, my hat's off to Corey Hollis because that's a guy who he's always a perennial contender for like technician of the year and now he's made himself the main event heel where he's going um, he's the best heel going right now that's impressive congratulations to Corey Hollis and uh, I still think wrestler of the year is Logan's Logan Creed's to lose um, yeah anyway that's our full disclosure news and commentary number five See you soon.